Hey, thanks for watching. We're going to be talking about whether or not damp air, moist air, humid air, whatever you want to call it, is heavier or lighter than dry air. First off, the air around us almost always has some amount of moisture content in it, water vapor in the air. And that water vapor, as it increases, also increases our relative humidity. And that humidity, of course, is relative to temperature. So when we say relative humidity, what we're saying is the percentage relative to how much water vapor there could be in the air at the given temperature. I often use the example of tea or coffee. You know that when your tea or coffee is cold, it doesn't hold as much sugar. You can stir the sugar, it just doesn't absorb. But when you heat up that tea or coffee, then the fluid can hold more sugar in it. And if you think of air in the same way, it's not exactly the same, but when air is warmer, it can hold more overall water vapor content. But first, let's address this phrase that heat rises, and that isn't exactly true. What actually happens is hot air is buoyant or hot air floats in colder air, and colder air sinks in warmer air. In other words, it has a higher density when it is colder, or another way of saying that is, it has a higher pounds per cubic foot. And that's mostly what we're gonna be talking about here is pounds per cubic foot. If it, if it weighs more per cubic foot, then it is more dense. If it weighs less per cubic foot, then it is less dense. And so warmer air is less dense, and so it floats in cooler air. And we know that that happens. We know that warm air rises. We see this in a lot of different uh, phenomenon, but inside of our homes, we see it because often as you go upstairs in a home, if it only has one AC system, you'll notice that you get that stack effect of the warm air rising and the cool air simultaneously falling, making it cooler downstairs and warmer upstairs, just in terms of natural convective forces. So we know that part. But is moist air, is air that has higher relative humidity or higher overall water vapor content in the air, is it heavier or lighter? Is it more dense if it has water, more water vapor in it? And so let's look at some numbers quickly. First off, air is made up of a lot of different things. And if it's completely dry, it's mostly made up of nitrogen. That is the largest percentage uh, that air is made up of, about 78%. And then number two, way down the list, is oxygen at about 21%, 20.9%. And then from there, there's a laundry list of different gases that are all under 1%, argon, CO2, neon, methane, and a bunch more. But they make up a very small amount of the overall mass of the air, the overall weight of the air. Most of the weight of the air is nitrogen and oxygen if it's dry air, if it has no water vapor in it. If it has water vapor in it, then often that water vapor will take up the third most common constituent of air. So it would go nitrogen, oxygen, water vapor, argon, CO2, neon, methane, in order of what air is made up of. But in terms of completely dry air, completely dry air has a weight of 0.0807 pounds per cubic foot. And it's very light, of course, because it's a vapor. Uh, all gases are pretty light. But it's about you know, we'll just, we'll just round here. It's about 0 0.08 pounds per cubic foot. Now compare that to water vapor. Now, again, this is not liquid water, so we're not talking about fog here. We're talking about just water vapor when it's truly a gas in the air. It has a weight of 0 0.0472. Again, if we just went around, we'll just say, you know, about 0 0.5. So water vapor is a lower pounds per cubic foot, lower density than air. And that means that water vapor will float in air. When water vapor is a constituent part that makes up the air, then air that has higher moisture content in terms of water vapor is going to be buoyant, meaning it's going to float in air of the same type and the same temperature, but that has a lower moisture content. So another way of saying that very simply is that air that has more water vapor in it, if everything else is the same, is actually lighter than air that does not. Now, why do we think that moist air, damp air is heavier? Well, there's several reasons that we do. One is, is that when air actually is suspending liquid water particles in the case of fog, then it is heavier in the sense that those liquid particles, those suspended water particles that are in the liquid form that we call liquid water, those are heavier. So liquid water is significantly heavier than air. That's fairly obvious. All you have to do is you know, take the glass, dump it upside down, and you'll see what happens. It is heavier than air, but it's the water vapor that's lighter. So that's one reason why we think uh, just in our heads that water vapor would be more dense than air is because we're thinking in terms of liquid water. The other reason is, is that air that has higher moisture content or has more humidity in it does feel 
heavier to us in the sense that it feels more oppressive to us. And the reason is, is that air that has more moisture content in it, especially in terms of relative humidity, our bodies can no longer give off heat via evaporation, via sweat. And so when we have higher moisture content in the air, we feel kind of oppressed because we're not able to reject heat off of our bodies the way our bodies were designed. And that's why it feels muggy or it feels uncomfortable on a high relative humidity day because our bodies can't reject heat in that way. And so that's another reason why I think often people will think that air that has moisture in it is more dense when in fact it is not. More moisture equals actual less density. And we know this, right? We know that when water leaves a, a lake or leaves the ocean, it travels upward. That water makes it up and it creates clouds and then those clouds rain the water back down. If water vapor were heavier than air, then our clouds would be on the ground. We know that water vapor is lighter because our clouds end up in the sky. So pretty obvious stuff, right? But well, there's another factor for technicians when you start to get kind of deep into the weeds of enthalpy, so enthalpy split or delta H is something that's sort of an advanced concept in terms of looking at things like total delivered capacity of a system. Or even when you're doing something like a delta T calculator where you have to use wet bulb temperature of the return air in order to calculate what your target delta T is. What you find is, is that air that has moisture in it, higher moisture in it, higher relative humidity or higher total moisture content to be more exact, has more enthalpy. And so why would that be? If air that has moisture in it is lighter, it's less dense, why would it have more enthalpy? And the secret there is that air that has water vapor in it has latent heat in it that shows up when that air travels over the evaporator coil and the evaporator coil is lower than dew point, which means that there's actually heat being removed from that water vapor that's doing more than just changing its temperature, it's actually changing its state. So those of you who understand the basic refrigerant circuit, you know that far more heat energy is transferred in order to change the state of something than it is to just change its temperature once it has changed state. So from a very practical standpoint, if you run a 70 degree stream of return air over an evaporator coil that has 10% relative humidity in it, and you run a 70 degree airstream that has 80% relative humidity in it, in terms of density, the one with the higher relative humidity or therefore the higher moisture content actually is lighter, it is less dense. But what happens is, is that when it goes over that evaporator coil, some of that energy goes to turning that water vapor into liquid water so long as that evaporator coil is below dew point. And that in effect holds up the surface temperature of that evaporator coil. Because now as that water is changing state, its temperature can't drop. It's just like the kind of in reverse when you have the boiling pot of water. You, you slowly increase the temperature of that water until you hit 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you hit that temperature, now you can keep adding heat, but the temperature doesn't change. And the same thing is true when you're taking heat out of air. When it hits that temperature, that dew point temperature, and you're changing the state of that water vapor to liquid water, it artificially holds up the temperature of that evaporator coil, therefore putting more load on it. And in turn, you don't get as much of a temperature split. From a very practical standpoint, when you have drier air running over an evaporator coil, everything else being the same, the, the temperature of the refrigerant moving through, all of that, your delta T is going to be higher when it's drier air than when that air has more moisture content in it. Even though, like the point of this video said, even though that air is less dense, meaning it actually weighs less per pound. And so that all comes down to that latent heat transfer. You actually are transferring latent heat out of that water and changing it from water vapor to liquid water. But again, main point of this video, the thing you can take away is if you're ever doing any calculations uh, and you run into this, you know, finding that water vapor is lighter than air, there's nothing wrong with your calculations. You will find that actually it's significantly lighter than air. Again, water vapor, 0.0472 pounds per cubic foot versus air, which is 0.0807 pounds per cubic foot. Now, again, these are sort of standard equations. There's a lot of factors. When we say air, we're giving you a standard air equation. The density of air changes based on many, many factors, barometric pressure uh, and temperature being some of the bigger ones uh, in addition to total moisture content. So that's a moving target. Um, some people may ask why water vapor is lighter than air. And just quickly, if you look at the weight of hydrogen, we know that water is made up of hydrogen and oxygen, H2O, right? The weight of hydrogen is so light, it's 0 0.0051. So it's about 16 times lighter than air. And because hydrogen in its gaseous form is one of the constituent parts of water vapor, 
that is the reason why it's significantly lighter than air. It's that hydrogen because the other two parts of water vapor are oxygen and the weight of oxygen is actually very similar to air. It's very close. It's actually slightly more heavy, but it's, it's very, very close. It's that hydrogen atom that's part of that molecule that makes that water vapor significantly lighter than air. All right, so there you go. Hopefully you found that helpful. It might've been a little nerdy for you, but uh, it's something that you can wow your friends with at parties. Actually don't do that because you won't have any friends left. All right, we'll catch you on the next video.